Hello and welcome to The Shed. In today's video we're going to be making this poor man's DIY all. Hope you enjoy. So for this all I'm going to be using this big old nail that I found here measuring about 100mm in length. So it's a fairly large old nail and so what we're going to be doing is making a round all today. So keeping with the theme of the poor man's DIY all we're going to be using this construction pine today for the handle. The first step in this process is obviously to determine how wide we want that handle and how long we want the handle. And remember, oversize your piece while you're shaping your handle so you've got somewhere to clamp so it doesn't get in the way of actually shaping your handle. So let's jump down here and we'll get started. What we want to do here is have a decent length handle. So I've just grabbed a chisel here and I think this is a pretty good length so I'm just going to put a mark there. And we're just going to square a line across. Probably just going to go half this material. Just going to eyeball it because I don't need the handle to be too large. Something about the size of this chisel is going to be perfect. And we're going to shape our handle out of this piece of pine here. Now it doesn't matter that it's got this big dig out of it that you can see here because we're going to end up shaping it down a little bit and that'll disappear in that and nor does the heavy chamfer here really matter either. You're going to want to square a line here and that way although this is not actually square and we'll square that up on the shooting board it's going to give us a ballpark figure to chop to roughly chop this piece out. So let's go ahead and we'll chop this out. Let me just give you a ballpark line so you can roughly see where I'm working cut this, I'm going to grab my Spoon Jackson rip tooth saw, which is about seven and a half teeth per inch, this one I believe. So I'm going to start just by pinching on the line here. And I find with a, a saw this size, I don't really have to pull towards me to start it, I can actually push away to start it. Because the teeth are actually fine enough. So normally when we sat, uh, you know, saw like this, slowly drop the hand up with each consecutive pass. And that's giving us an angle cut, which allows the plate to just effortlessly glide through. And once I'm established, I tend to come up to the flat, which is just making the tooth out a little bit more aggressive, which is going to mean it's going to saw faster. So I've now reached that baseline here. So I'm going to come down maybe another 50, 60 mil. And so that'll be a couple of extra inches just so we can clamp it. I'm not too worried about this excess that sits here because that's just scrap to clamp it. So I can just go ahead, use any saw that I've got. I can use my rip saw. It doesn't really matter how rough that cut is. So on another note, if you do want to practice your accurate sawing, your first class cuts and things like that, um, you can go ahead and do that with this, because it's just every learning chance, especially if you're still learning how to cut accurately, every time you do a cut like that, it's going to improve your skills. So there is another chance for you to do that if that's something you want to do. So we obviously want to do some sort of shaping to this handle now that we've got it chopped out. But what I like to do before we actually do anything is actually square this edge on the bottom here because this is going to be the edge that our nail fits into here. And so we need to make sure that is square to start with. So then we can actually go ahead and mark out our center. And I like to do that center first because then we know all the measurements and everything to that center and we can kind of judge it to that central hole. So if it does slide off center slightly, which quite often happens when you're drilling, uh, we can adjust where center of our handle is before we shape. So what we're going to do now is grab the shooting board out and shoot this edge square. So since I haven't actually done any squaring off this, I'm just using one of the factory edges that was already on this piece. It's going to be square enough for us to square that edge because really we only need that square edge to initially establish the nail in there. So it's not very important, but it is a ballpark figure because it's only a handle and you could carve it with a knife, spoke shave, your hand plane with a special jig. Um, it's not so important, it's just that we need that square. 
or square enough so we can get a, a decent reference by eye when we use that all. We just push that up. And I know this piece is a little bit higher than the fence here. But because it's pine, it's less likely to splinter out than a much harder wood. And so I don't think it's too much of an issue. So we've now got a nice flat edge here. And since we squared it off this side here, put a square on, we can see it's dead square. It happens to be slightly out of square the other two ways, but off our sawn edge it's also square, so it's not too bad. It's going to be surfaceable the way it currently is. So now that we've got the square, what we need to do is put a centre mark in the middle of this so we know where we need to drill a hole. And so we're going to come in with the ruler corner to corner. I have an ever so slight radius on the corner, so I'm just eyeballing the centre of that, and that'll get us our central point. So a line that way and a line this way. You saw my video where I made this square edge jig. This is being done dead 90 degrees in this corner here and that will ensure that we get a dead 90 degree drill bit. And you can obviously do these for any angles, for chair legs, for anything. So what we're going to do is try and hold this up on top to square the drill bit. Once we've got it started we can move the jig out of the way. So let's do that. So first of all, I want to get this sitting as dead upright as I possibly can to the point that I'm actually going to use a square because this is going to allow us to get a very straight line in here and if we haven't got it upright and square to start with it's going to make it much harder. So we've got that dead bolt up square right where we want it. So I'm going to sit it on that crosshair, come in like this, referencing it down, pushing the drill bit right into the corner on both corners, so it's sitting dead bolt upright in both directions, making sure I'm holding it flat on the surface, and I'll go down that little bit. Now that should have established it enough, square enough, that I can now drill in a little bit further. So. The hole doesn't need to go down too far. Probably about that amount is actually not bad. So it's going to go in maybe 20, 25 mil, so about an inch. But now we need that to fit, so we need to make a larger hole. I'm straight back in, and you don't need the square reference because the hole should already guide you. So now what we want to do is go ahead and cut the head off this nail. And for that we want to use a hacksaw. So what I've got here is a 24 teeth per inch blade for my hacksaw. Now that's going to leave a nice fine finish. You could use something more aggressive, it doesn't really matter because you could finish off with a mill file, but because it's going to be embedded inside the handle, it doesn't really matter too much. Let's come straight in here and saw it off. Now that we've got that done, we want to go ahead and start shaping our handle. So how do we want to shape our handle? Well, it depends if you want a round handle, depends if you want a hexagonal handle, depends if you want some random carved shape. It's really up to you how you decide to do this. I'm just going to roughly eyeball here, make a mark, make a mark, and we can see those marks here. I'm going to hand plane each of these sides down a little bit before we uh, start shaping. Now I'm going to do similar on this side. So now we can see this is in more of a square shape as we'd want. So the next point here is to actually start taking down these corners. So you can now see that this is looking more round but with the smaller facets here which were the original flat sides. So now what we want to do is turn them this way and we want to plane these ones until it comes about halfway on both sides here so we've got even facets 
on all of these corners. Looks like in my hand planing this is slightly tapered, which is making it a little difficult for me to clamp it here in my vise. What I'm going to do is just put a little bit of sandpaper in on my wooden side of the vise. And that should help grip that. And now it won't fall. So looking at this now, you can see that although the facets are not 100% perfect, it feels nice and comfortable on my hand, so that's what I'm going to go with. I've also inadvertently, while hand planing, ended up with a bit of a taper, which is not a bad thing for a handle. It's not bad that it tapers a little bit further down here than at the back, and we're going to be chopping it off roughly here. So that's going to be about a nice, nice size and shape for a handle. So let's go ahead, we'll measure out the length of that handle onto here again and we're actually going to saw this off now. We will add some extra little chamfers on there so if your hand does come up over here we don't get it all dug in and also removes those little arises so we remove those sharp corners as well so that they don't get damaged. So how are we going to go about putting this little chamfer on here? You could use a chisel, you could use some sandpaper on a piece of wood or if you have a mill file, which I've got here, I'm going to go ahead and use the mill file because that's going to be the easiest, especially working with end grain on such a small piece, it's going to be a lot safer than trying to use a chisel on that as well and less likely to tear out because we're abrading it rather than cutting it. a little bit and now I've just got a little bit of 240 grit sandpaper so if we look at this you can see that it's nicely rounded over there which is going to be perfect for what we want to do so now what we want to do is ideally sharpen our awl now you could stick it in your handle first but it's going to be easier if we grab those vice grips again and hold it clamped in the vice grips. And we're going to sharpen the very point of this nail so we get it to a nice sharp point on those facets of that nail there because this is very blunt at the moment. have a look here it might not be a hundred percent perfect but it is a nice point which will leave a, a mark on the timber so now we need to go ahead and glue our nail into a handle ideally something like five minute epoxy I had some five minute epoxy lying around that I thought was okay but the hardener had already dried up so I'm gonna go ahead and use some thick super glue or CA glue instead that will hold but ideally if you can get something like a five minute epoxy or any other epoxy that's going to be the best for holding this in and will give you the most longevity. I'm going to run some super glue on the side of the hole like this and also get a little bit on my nail here. Make sure the hole's nice and full of super glue, it's going to make it easier. And now we're going to push that in as far down as it'll go. I'm going to align one of the facets to this side because that's the way I want it done. We've got a little bit of squeeze out around here, so we're just going to wipe that squeeze out off. eyeball to see where square is which for me is about there I have a little bit of activator here and so you hold it square and just tap it and that little top part is going to hold it where you want it ideally you would have my five minutes to work with this if you were using a five minute epoxy but in a pinch this will get it done so now I just need to wait for this to set 
while that super glue hardens a little bit, I'm going to leave it a, a few minutes to do that. We can go ahead and put a finish on the handle. Now you could shellac it, hard wax oil, uh, paste wax, any finish you want, any oil finish, any uh, you know film finish, any finish that you want. You can go ahead and put it on there and put your fi you know finish of choice onto this tool. Another thing that I didn't do is you can chamfer these corners down the bottom here if you really want to. I don't find they really need it, but you could just make it as simple as holding it on a 45 and just go around a couple of times with a file and that should ensure that that edge doesn't split as well. I've got this hard wax oil finish which is in a teak colour, so I'm, which you've probably seen me use before, so I'm going to go ahead and use this. For anyone that wants to know, this is from Interbuild. I did pick it up at Bunnings, but I don't think they sell it anymore. This was just a little sample pot. And so we just get a little bit on here. Rub it onto the surface. Add as much or as little as you want to the handle. This particular type is not one that you just put one coat on, you can add as much as you want or as much as the wood will soak up. So this end grain will soak up, end grain both here and on the back, probably soak up a little bit more than elsewhere. Essentially that's all we need to do to this. I'm just going to grab my horsehair brush and just give this a polish straight away because I already know that it's not really going to need to take any more. And we can see that that gave it a nice little colour and kind of finishes it off. Now it might not be the most pretty tool but it will work so let's jump down here and give it a little test. First of all on the end grain. And we can see we've got actually quite a deep hole there. It's gone in the entire head of the the awl. So let's try some long grain. And you can see with those facets we can actually turn it around and it kind of cuts in a little bit like a square awl. So once again, you can see we've gone in the entire head of the awl. It might not be the most pretty tool, but it's going to be functional and get you operating using an awl if you don't want to buy one or can't afford to buy one. Plus, I think it's a nice little added bonus that you can actually make the tool yourself and use it. And plus, it's extremely easy to sharpen because all you need is a file. And one quick little hit on each of these now and that'll keep it sharp. There you have it folks, that is the poor man or the cheap awl, which will get you started in a pinch and allow you to hone your skills while making a tool for your shop. So if you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing down below. And while you're down there, please consider commenting in the box below. What did you like about this build? What didn't you like? Was there anything else that I didn't cover that you wanted to know about this? Please leave that down below and if you'd like to support me a little bit further please consider checking me out on Patreon and Instagram and if you see some more cheap tool build videos such as this check out the one up here where I show you how to make the poor man's sharpening setup and also the poor man's strop. Bye for now.